Hi everybody, in this second video about the usage of our own user controls, I would like to discuss how can we use our controls in the context of the different wizards that exist. So let's do quickly create our own controls and then let's play with them. I'll start by creating a folder called dev demo, dev demo 2, and in that folder I'll create a new folder called my controls. Perfect. And in it I will create my control by using the templates, paste control, and create my label. Perfect. Now that I have my label, let's start playing around with it. I'll create a UE controller. I'll create some columns here for our test case. First thing. and lesson. Great. Now, when we are going over to design our screen and we want to use a label on the screen, we first need to add it to the toolbox. So I'm going to right click here, say add controls to toolbox. I will choose the EX in which I've created the control and get an arrow. Let's repeat this and try now. Okay, so when seeing this arrow, never seen it before, but I'm going to try with Stop and Start Visual Studio and hopefully that will be enough. And here we are again. Choose the folder I want it in and say add controls toolbox. Yay! Great. So now you've seen real life demo with real life problems and restarting Visual Studio usually helps. So I'm going to select my label, which is in my controls folder, just like you can see it here on the right. And when I do that, it will be added to the selected folder in the toolbox. And now it appears over here. I'll drag and drop it to the screen and I've got it as a text box and not as a, as a label. Great. So let's make this label an actual label. I'll go to the source of my label and I'll right click and say view code and instead of inheriting from the text box I will inherit from the label and this will make it a label. Let's see. Now it's a label. Great. Let's say I want to distinguish it. I want to give it a weird back color. So I'll go over to my label and I'll choose back color and in the back color, I'll choose this kind of blue. I will rebuild it, go over to my designer, recommend it to close, rebuild my project and open the designer and we see that it has its effect. Great, so this is how we are using our own controls. We covered it in a previous video, but this is to set the tone for the current discussion. So we've seen how we can use these controls from the toolbox but we also have this nice little column with it where I can select the fields that I've created earlier and it will automatically create labels and text boxes for them. Unfortunately, I don't like this label because this label is of type Northwind Theme Controls Label and I wanted to use my label that is in Dev Demo 2 My Control My Label. How can I change the uh, column without to use my custom label? So, I'll remove this. I will also close the designer. It's kind of important to close the designer. I'll go over to theme, controls, form. This is the form you are in. And we can see here that we can actually determine the default label type and the default text box type. Currently, the default label type is of type Northwind theme controls label. So let's change it to use our own. We'll say dev demo 2, my controls, my label. I will rebuild it. Return to my designer and now it is using my own control as the default for the designer. Great, so we've done so for label. Let's do the same also for grid and grid column. So let's create our own grid column. Add new item, paste control, 
my head column and in its code it says that it's a grid column okay and in the designer to make it distinguishable we're going to change the font this time so I want the font to be bold and big and underline and italic okay great so just like before we're going to go to our form and we'll place a grid on it and we'll add this is fun just like before we'll close and reopen visual studio because for some reason the add control to toolbox is having a problem and say add controls to toolbox and choose my grid column great it went into general so i can take this and drop it on our grid and you can see i'm enjoying this grid column but if I'm going to go and activate the column wizard, okay, I still get the default column. We can see again, it's of type sim control grid column. So just like before, we're going to go to the code of the grid that we were using, which was this one. And here we can see the grid column type and the default text box type. So we change this instead of using the default grid column to use our grid column. Dev demo 2, my controls my grid column. Back to our designer, delete these two columns and select the column wizard and we'll now use the columns that we wanted. So this is the way you can control these things and during this demo you've also seen that twice I had to restart Visual Studio and it's worth talking about a bit. Visual Studio doesn't like it when you change the nature of which controls too many times while it is running. I recommend to separate the work. When you're working on creating your own base controls and adjusting the environment in which you're developing, do it in one solution and in your day-to-day -day development do it in another solution without rebuilding these projects too many times. Uh, since it's not such a common operation or a day-to-day -day operation, it's more of a setup that you do once and then reuse, I think that's the best way to do that. I hope that you found this video useful and see you on the next videos.